All right, let's keep going here. So next thing we're going to do is where I noticed that um, our background here, we change it, of course, to that gray. Uh, therefore, we have this not so great gray background here. Let's change that. Let's go back to our widget here. Let's actually change the background here to back to what it was, which is which is white and such. Let's save and give it a run. Okay, let's see. Okay, much better. Okay, so now if you move, look at that. I like that much better. Very cool. Okay, let's go ahead and work on our set width button here. That way when they set width, then we actually go back here and we're able to start putting together things together here, okay? Okay, let's clear, still works. All right, let's go back to our main activity. So inside of our set width, let's say we have toast for now. Let's get rid of that because we actually want to put some real code here. Let's go ahead and say, look at our seek bar. So we have the width seek bar. So what are we gonna do now? We're gonna go ahead and say Picasso view. We're gonna set line width and we're gonna pass here our width seek bar dot get progress. Okay, that's the method that will give us an integer, which is the progress, meaning which is the, it's going to be the numbers as we change there, there's numbers that we are fetching, right? So if we stop here, it's going to be maybe 25, right? Or something like that. Okay, so we're fetching that. And then what I need to do is to say current dialog find dismiss and I can't see the dismiss here. I think the reason why is because here what I can do to actually create, I'm going to create an actual alert dialog, call this dialog is equal to that. And then I'm going to use it, our alert dialog or dialog in this case to show. So now we actually put inside of a variable that we can actually use to to make this work and let me make this okay, copy this and create a an instance variable at the top here this is going to be line width so let's say here line width dialog line width, dialog line width as such. Okay, so now we will be able to use here, say dialog line width, that dismiss. Okay, so that means as soon as this happens, we are going to dismiss it. And we're going to say current dialog is equal to null. So get rid of it. Let's run. Okay, let's try again. Whoa, there we go, we're moving. So set and we moved. So the moment you do that, look at that, okay? Let's see if these actually work. I'm gonna go all the way, really big. And you can see it's changed from this small one that we had to a bigger one, okay? Very nice, so we know that our dialogue is indeed working. Let's see, make it really small, set. It's going to be really small. Ah, very nice. Let's set this one. It's going to be a little bit smaller. And how about trying to set this one to nothing? It's really, really tiny. Perfect. Very nice. So now we are able to then, of course, to set our width using our dialog. And the other thing we need to do here, let me see, let's add a title at the top here, right? Because now it's just a dialogue with no title. To do that, we can simply go back to at the bottom here, before we show the dialogue, we can go ahead and say dialogue line that set title. We can just give it a title here, or we could have added inside of our string. For now, I'm just gonna get put a title here. I'm gonna say set line width. Save, give it a run. Click, and there you go, set line width. Okay, very nice. 
So the next thing we're going to work on is going to be our color dialog. So now we need to make sure that if users want to change color, they click here, we want to invoke a color dialog. So essentially the same thing that we did with our with dialog. So without any further ado, you can right click on layout, say new, want another layout resource here. This one we're going to call color underscore dialog. And we want this to be, let's put in the under linear layout, such, say OK. Give us more space here. All right, so there we go. So we have a linear layout, and I want to make sure that this linear layout is actually vertical. So I'm going to change, click on linear layout, say orientation. I want, oh, it is vertical already. Oh, perfect. That's great. <laughs> Okay, so next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add a table layout here. So that will allow us to organize everything, all of our views in a better way here. So I'm going to say table. There we go, table layout. I'm going to put it in there in the middle. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a few table rows here. I'm going to put it inside. There we go. We got a few table rows. Let's go into code here. That way it's easier, a bit easier for us to visualize things. Let's give this ID. This table layout here an ID. We're going to call this table layout. And next thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to give it a layout margin of about 10 dp. There we go. You can see now it gives us a little bit of a margin there. And I'm going to use the stretch columns to one. Okay, so it's going to stretch everything to one. And inside of our table row, the first one, what we're going to do, I'm going to make this orientation to be horizontal because I want everything to be horizontally laid out. And I want this to be match parent and I want the height to be wrap content actually. Inside here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually create a parent. Row, so I can put stuff inside of this row. Well, the first thing I'm going to add is going to be a text view. So next, this text view is going to be inside. Uh, let's give it uh, an ID. Let's give it a width, layout width, wrap content, layout height wrap content as well. Let's give it a gravity. Say right. Okay, it's going to the right. What else? Let's give it text here. Text. I'm going to put that there. In fact, I'm going to call this text, call this label alpha. This is for our alpha channel. So it hasn't been created. We're going to create it right now. Uh, resource, we're going to call this alpha. Like that. So you can see it says alpha. Okay, good. Uh, before we go, let's give a another gravity layout gravity to center vertical. Okay, it'll make sense in a minute here. And then right below that, still inside of this row here, our row, we're going to add a seek bar because we need it. I'm going to give an ID. Let's call this alpha seek bar. with wrap content and height also of wrap content. I'm going to give a max right of 255. Now the reason why we're doing 255 because for alpha channel we go from 0 to 255 bytes, okay? That's the the range that we usually use in colors or channel channels for colors and so you can see there it is, maybe giving a little padding here. I'm going to say padding left, about 10 
dp okay padding right of also about 10 dp just give it a little bit of padding it's hard to see but at least there is some sort of padding there let's give it a general padding probably about 14 dp that way it looks a little bit bigger and such okay very good so we're actually going to do the same thing with other table rows here i'm gonna i should probably copy this because we don't need to do the same thing let me see i'm gonna just copy paste it in here there's that one paste in there and the last one there we go so we're gonna have four which means we don't need any of these ones there. Delete that. Okay, let's change a few IDs here so that we don't get this error. The so first one was alpha, which we created here. This one is going to be red seek bar. And let's change this text to say, say label red so we have to create that red like that there we go so it says red very good green seek bar of course green that okay we're getting there and the last one is going to be blue C bar say blue okay we create this as well blue okay so now we have all of our items showing here so right below, we're going to create another linear layout at the bottom here. Say match parent for the width and for the height. It's going to be wrap content. And what we're going to do is we are actually going to add a few things. Let's give a layout margin of about 10 dp. So we have some sort of spacing there. OK, so inside we're going to create an actual view object. So this view object here, we will get or fetch it or add something to it in code. So this view here will hold hold the color. Again, the same idea here as we change these colors here, we're going to show an overview of the color that they're changing to. Okay, so another visual aid for our for our users. So what I'm going to do view, let's see, width is going to be match parent, and I'm going to make this height of about 45 dp of course you can change that to what you need but for me that will work of course we need to add an id because we need to reference it i'm going to call this color view let's give this linear layout an id as well in case we want to reference it we're going to call this let's go ahead and say background I'm going to give a android white as such okay so that it's always white And below our linear layout, because below our view, we're going to add a button here. I'm going to say button. It's going to be wrap content, wrap content. I'm going to give an ID. The ID is going to be set color button. And gravity, I'm going to say center horizontal. And we're going to say text is going to be set color such we're going to change that we're going to add into our resources okay for some reason is not showing let's see there we go Make that smaller and there we go so you can see now we have our set color button we have our view which will inflate and add things to it at runtime 
Okay, so I think we are done with our user interface. Let's go ahead and save this. And in the next video, we are going to use our color. In the next video, what are going to do? In the next video, we're going to use our color dialog, which is what we just created here, and inflate it in actual created dialog, where users can start sliding left and right to uh, view the color that they are selecting for their paintbrush. Okay, perfect. I'll see you next.